think we have a bit of a long walk tonight, so I want to quickly go into the Word of God. Turn with me to the book of Malachi, chapter 3. I read from verse 1 to 3. Malachi, chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. Behold, my, I send my messenger. He will prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom you seek, will suddenly come to his temple. If you are seeking something and the thing appears, it should bring you joy, isn't it? The Lord whom you seek, why do you seek the Lord? Because you just sang a few minutes ago that his presence is heaven to you. And we, we have so much of sound, so much of words to describe how much we need him. And the Lord whom you seek will not make himself scarce to you. He will make himself available. He will suddenly come into his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Two words are used there. You what? You seek him. Number two, what? You delight. How many of you really like going for meeting to meet him? It has become a taste we have. Why do we have that taste? Because we love the Lord. Hallelujah. I've come here tonight to speak to people who love the Lord. Who delight in him. Who love hearing his word. The, the psalmist spoke in one place. He said, your, your words are sweet to my ears. Some of us, our day is just made by just hearing the word. We have a love for him. We seek him. We don't just seek him. We delight in doing it. And he said, because of that, it will appear to us because we seek him. But he now brought a question. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For it's like a refiner's fire, like a laundress soul. It will sit as a refiner and as a purifier of silver. It will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver. And they will offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. That looks like an anticlimax. The Lord whom you seek shall suddenly appear. But he now brought the question, can you stand? It looks like a people who confess Abraham is our father. And who confess God is our father. Just, they showed so much delight in him. But the amazing conclusion Jesus brought out of all their confession is that you have your father today. Because many a times we are not on the same page with God for the reason we are seeking him. I don't know whether you get that thought. We have the desire, we have the body, but we don't have what is driving God's mind for gathering us. Let's go to Isaiah 58. I have so many scriptures I can refer to tonight, but I'm just trying to glide and bring us a thought that I believe will be a blessing to us. Isaiah chapter 58. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people, they are my people, their transgression, the house of Jacob, their sins. Yet they seek me what? How many times do they seek God? How many of you can remember how many meetings you have attended this year? You have lost count. You can't be called somebody that doesn't seek God. They seek me daily. Number two. They delight to know my ways. If you open the laptop of some of us, there are at least a thousand messages there. We want to hear diverse voices. We are moved by the way they express it. Just a little of tired that in there. Another little of burning in there. You know, we, we delight. It's exciting. It's a, it's a journey. There were times in my life where I sat down with Christian television for 24 hours. Just listening to diverse people, even sometimes conf contradicting themselves. It's just exciting. I just delight in it. I see everything. I see design. I see, I see light. I see excellence. I see, I see suit. What do you see when you come to church? You see everything. You see fine mama. There's nothing people don't see now. I mean, 
They delight to know my ways. They see different styles of the anointing. They see a man that stands on the pulpit and raises his hand, and 10,000 people fall down. Lord, Dare, Dare, show me your way. Dare. Then they move up to another place. They see a man stand on the pulpit and preach, and 3,000 people respond to God. They say, God, that's the type of voice I want to be. But they like to know my ways. As a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They delight in approaching God. One of the questions I hear every day, when is the next pure language congress? The way we ask, you think we are ready for revival. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly appear in his temple. But who can abide when he appears? Because it will be a refiner's fire. He will take things just the way they appear. So they said to God, we have fasted, they say, and you have not seen. These were not lazy people. There are some of you that don't like that word fast. These people, they take the word. We have fasted, and we have not seen. What if we afflicted our souls, and you take no notice? In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exploit all your laborers. Continue. Indeed, you fast for strife. Do they fast? And debate to strike with the feast of wickedness. You will not fast as you do this day to make my voice, to make your voice to be heard on high. Is this the fast I have chosen? Does God recognize a fast? Yes. But does God recognize all fast? No. Does God recognize passion? Yes. But does God have respect to all types of passion, even in his name? No. Because there is a type of fast that he has chosen. I said, it's a day for a man to afflict his soul. Is it to bow his head like a bulrush to spread out sackcloth? Will you call this a fast, an acceptable day unto the Lord? Is, is this not the fast that I have chosen? Ah, may we come to the same page with the Lord. May we not be doing something and think we are doing it to God. And we say with confidence, we have our Father, God. To let us discover, we are the fathers from God. It's amazing. Is this not the fast I've chosen to lose the bonds of wickedness? May you not be spiritual and so full of hatred. There are people that their spirituality had brought this to others. It does not lose wickedness. Are you imagine how people will be defending the Sabbath and fighting the healing in the days of Jesus? They want the Sabbath to be kept holy, but they don't mind if a woman continues under the bondage of Satan for 18 years. And they have missed the purpose of the fast. Because it's possible to be very passionate and miss the purpose of worship. To undo everybody. To let the oppressed go free. To break every yoke. When we come here, what is God's ultimate desire is that our jokes be broken. What's God's ultimate desire is that our heads be lifted. Tonight your head will be lifted. In the name of Jesus Christ. But occasionally, when God comes to his house, the people who have been seeking him to come are not actually there for why he comes. Are you following me? When God comes, there's always a reaction. When the temple was built, in 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 7 to 14, they brought the ark of God. And when the ark of God came into the temple, what happened? The Bible said the presence of God came. And the priest could not stand, could not enter. And that was not the first time. Because in Exodus 40, verse 34 to 38, when they raised the tabernacle, the same thing came. And the Bible said Moses could not enter. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 20 said, Be quiet, for the Lord is in his holy temple. 
Because when it comes to his holy temple, he will have to rearrange it according to his own desire. Because there could be things we have brought there that is not ultimately what he's looking for. That you are in his temple does not mean you are looking for what God is looking for. You don't get it. Let all the earth keep silence. He said it in the, in the, in the book of Habakkuk 2.20. He said in the book of Zechariah chapter 2, I think verse 14. When he said, be silent for the Lord is aroused from his holy habitation. He's raised up in his holy habitation. What are these things? I'm looking tonight at what I call Jesus and his house. Because he will come to his house. How many of you want Jesus to come to his house? Why are we here? We seek him. Why are we here? We delight in him. We say seed in so many ways. We don't want to see any other man. Jesus, we only came to see you. How many of you have prayed that prayer before? We only came to see you. The question I'm asking you, if he really shows up, I hope you will like what you want to see. Isaiah prophesied about him, said, but when we beheld him, there was no comeliness in him. That we should desire him. Now, when he came in the Old Testament, people, people could not enter. That was the glory. But when he came into the New Testament, people did not come, not because the glory was concealed, but because what they were perceiving of him was contrary to what they were expecting. So, in two places, people could not enter. One for the manifestation of glory, the other for the disappointment of expectation. Amen. So when you hear and they could not enter, it was a type and shadow of a prophecy of how the glory of God was going to come on earth and men would not embrace it. It was perceived by them as though they cannot undo it. But what God is saying is that when you see the glory, you will not even want it. That was a prophecy of the coming of Jesus. That the flesh cannot enter. When the flesh sees Jesus, the flesh is repaired. And the, the one whom you seek will suddenly appear in his temple. But who can stand in the day of his coming? I will give you pictures of Jesus' journey around the temple. Because it's a type and shadow of his house. Let's start. Give you a few of the stories I'll rush through. The first place... Around the birth of Jesus was the coming of another person called John the Baptist. That prophecy of Malachi identified the two of them. He said, I'm going to send my messenger. Who is going to go before my messenger of the covenant? So he was describing two people. The messenger there was John the Baptist. The messenger of the covenant is the Lord who will appear in his own temple. And the Bible told us in Luke chapter 1 from verse 5 that there was a priest called Zechariah. And the Bible said, when he went to the temple, according to the custom. What is a custom? A custom is something that has become part and parcel of normal life. A custom is something you do over and over again. That's the reason why I ask you how many times have you attended church this year and you cannot even put a number on it. It has become a custom. But I hope it still has an expectation. Because something can become a custom and it has lost its purpose. So they delight in approaching me. They delight in saying, Lord, we have fasted. And God is saying, but that is not the fast I have called for. So this man actually went according to his custom to burn incense. And suddenly, around the altar, angel of God manifested. And he was shocked. The question is, why are you shocked? I thought you have always been telling people that God is here. It's amazing many a times that the God whom we believe mentally, when he manifests himself experientially, there is a shaking in our lives. Because most times what we have for him is a mental asset. Are you following me? We just have a way of doing things and believing that we are religious and spiritual people. And he looked at the man and said, you are going to have a child. The man said, no problem. I thank you. The, the, the man said, the problem I have is that I'm old. My wife is old. And Gabriel looked at him. Yeah. You are the one standing at the altar. <laughs> said, for this reason, you will be dumb. But that word will come to pass. Yeah? Yeah. And the Bible told us from verse 22 to 
26 to 38, that around this same time, that angel six months after went to another place called Nazareth. Because I'm going to show you Jerusalem. I'm going to show you Nazareth because they are the types and shadows of Jesus dwelling. And I went to another woman and said, you know, you are going to have a child and his name is going to be Jesus. And the woman said, be it unto me according to your word. It's amazing that Nazareth, that doesn't seem to carry a spiritual toga, was more receptive than Jerusalem, that seemed to carry the toga of God's house. Uh, you didn't get what I just said. It's amazing how many people will be called by his name, but when it appears to them for what they seek him to be, they are not prepared for the encounter. And they gave back to Jesus. The first time in Luke chapter 2, verse 21. Luke chapter 2, verse 21. When eight days were completed, after they gave back to Jesus, for circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus. The name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Yes. Now when the days of our purification, according to the law of Moses, were completed. Whose purification? Mary. Mary. You see, let, let me show you that custom. Do you know the custom that took Mary to the temple? Mary, the Bible says, I, I will show you. Now when the days of application, according to the law of Moses, were completed, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. It was going to be a day of the purification of Mary. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called only to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. But there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simon. Mary went there. Then most of what Mary went to Jerusalem for that day was to just purify herself. Let me show you that custom. That custom is in Leviticus chapter 12, verse 1 to 8. Leviticus chapter 12. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel. If a woman has conceived and has born a male child, she shall be unclean seven days as in the days of her customary impurity, she shall be unclean. On the eighth day, the flesh of his first king shall be circumcised. That's what happened to Jesus. On the eighth day, he was circumcised and called the name that the angel had given to him, Jesus. Then she shall continue in the blood of her purification 33 days. She shall not touch any hallowed thing, nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purification was over. So when they went to Jerusalem that day, one of the reasons why they went to Jerusalem was the purification of Mary. Are you following? Shall continue in the blood of purification until the days of purification are fulfilled. Yes, verse 5. If she bears a female child, she shall be, she shall be, she shall be unclean two weeks. As in her customary impurity, she shall continue in the blood of her purification 66 days. When the days of her purification are fulfilled, whether for a son or a daughter, she shall bring to the priest a lamb of the first year as a burnt offering, and a young pigeon or a turtle dove as a sin offering to the door of the tabernacle of the meeting. And this he shall offer it before the Lord and make atonement for her, and shall be clean from the flow of her blood. This is the law of her who has born a male or a female. And if she's not able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring two turtle doves. What, what did Mary bring? Two turtle doves and two pigeons. Mary went to Jerusalem to be purified. But that's not why Jesus went to Jerusalem. Because as they got there, Simon took the baby and lifted it to God and said, God, I thank you that my eyes I've seen consolation. Somebody went for purification, but God was actually announcing consolation. When we speak about the expanded reference of faith, we are actually talking about coming to terms with what God's plan is, as contrary to what your own thoughts are. You didn't get what I'm talking about. All the 
reason why Mary went to Jerusalem. So let me get purified so I can be reabsorbed into the committee of nations. I can be reabsorbed into society. Are you following me? But God said, that's not why I brought you here. No matter the reason why you thought you came here, may God's intention supersede your own purpose. Do you know why? Because God's view of things are always more expanded than yours. And so they pick the baby. And that man said, thank you, Lord, I can die now. The woman said, you are not talking about my turtle dove. He said, who is talking about your turtle dove? He said, you are not receiving my turtle dove. You are not receiving my pigeon. He said, ah, you didn't come here with a pigeon. You came here with the consolation of Israel. You didn't come here with a religious practice. You came here with something that is going to change the world. And some of you think you came here to learn about one or two names in the Bible. You didn't come to learn about one or two names in the Bible. You came to learn about what will change the world. It was not about, it's not about just learning Bible terminologies and being able to relate the story of Abraham and the story of Jabez and some story of, of Ananias and Sapphira. No, those things are examples unto us when the end of the age has come. I, I don't know whether you are getting me. You didn't come to learn some Bible terminologies. You came to receive something deeper in God's mind. And it's time to get what is the deepest thought in God's mind. Because many a times when we come, we are just out of tune with what God is saying. Are you following? And that man said, Lord, I can die. And before the man could finish, Anna, Anna the prophetess came. And every time the Bible said, Mary kept it in her heart. Do you know why Mary kept it in her heart? Because that's not why she came. She said, me, I just came according to custom. And you know one of the things that trap your Christian journey most is when it becomes a custom. When is our next program? According to custom. God is not here for custom. God is here for a deliberate purpose. This is not just something you do to fill the year. This is something that is relevant in your life, in time and eternity. And may your eyes of understanding about it be open. I thought you would say better. Amen. amen. Further in that story in Luke chapter 2, the Bible says after that time, they returned back to Nazareth. It was always a journey between Jerusalem and Nazareth. The two symbols of his dwelling. And the Bible told us after that time when he returned to, to Nazareth, he began to grow in wisdom. Then the Bible says some years after, when the boy was 12 years, according, who is following that story? According to the custom of going to Jerusalem around the feast of Passover. Who is reading this Bible? Who is there? Tonight you will you will follow me. Go to verse forty one. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at what? At the feast of Passover. It was a custom. The root of that custom you will see it in the book of Deuteronomy sixteen, verse one and verse sixteen and seventeen. When God told Israel three times every year. Must the children of Israel appear to me? And he mentioned it three times. He said, it's at the feast of unleavened bread, which is the feast of Passover. He said, and the feast of first fruit. He said, and the feast of tabernacle. One of the feasts was the feast of Passover. And according to that custom, that is the reason why his brothers uh, and his parents go to Jerusalem. But Jesus, every time Jesus goes to Jerusalem, he carries a deeper meaning than why people go. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Because they got there, did all their festivity, and did all their custom, and went back home. But he did not follow them back. And so they assumed he was with the people. And for three days they didn't locate him. Then when they found him, they found him seated in the temple. With the scholars, with the doctors. And he was relating with them. And they said, don't you know we have been looking for you? And he said, ah. Don't you know I must go about doing my father's? One of the things I taught you yesterday is that the day a child can begin to say, my father is growing. Suddenly, Jesus was not speaking from ignorance anymore. Which means at that point, Jesus has started putting a hand on the person of the father 
and on the purpose of his coming. When you come to church, may you locate the person of your father and the purpose of your coming. Are you following me? The first time he went, he went as a baby. In fact, 90% of things that happened there, he was not conscious. The son had not been able to say this, my father. In fact, if they asked Jesus about when they presented him at the temple, when he was just about 40 days old, he had nothing to say because he was not even sure. It was God was actually relating with another generation they had spoken to. But the next time he visited, there was a sense of consciousness that was already coming to Jesus. Uh, it's time for you to get conscious. The days of serving God unconsciously are over. Do you know why? You are growing. And when you are growing, you can put a name on who your father is. When you are growing, so Jesus said, don't you know I must go about doing my father's business? And they looked at him. Scripture told me something about Jesus. That is, he came out from a tribe of whom, of which Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. So, temple life was not Judah's life. It's not Levi. It's, he, so, when he said, my father, they didn't know they couldn't recognize, but he was growing. And as he was growing, he was beginning to comprehend what they couldn't comprehend. Are you following me? And the Bible said after that time, because they didn't understand, he went back again with them to Nazareth. It was always a journey between Jesus. He went back to Nazareth. I was subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in his heart. The next time Jesus visited Jerusalem, it was a spiritual encounter. It was in Luke chapter 4. It was at his temptation. The devil took him and brought him to the pinnacle of the temple that was in Jerusalem. I said, if you are the son of God, jump from this place. He has said his angels, he will give his angels charge about him. The enemy was saying, I want to wake you to go ahead of God's timing. But Jesus said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And after he left that place, do you know where he returned again? Nazareth. And as his custom was, may you have customs that will begin to speak in purpose. May our coming to church not just become a customarity. Jesus had custom that had meaning in his journey. So all People go to east to Jerusalem for custom. Jesus go, go anytime Jesus steps into Jerusalem, something is fulfilled. When you come to church, God is about to fulfill something. I hope your spirit is getting that. That we came here to fulfill purpose. We came here to fulfill hanging prophecies. We came here to fulfill promises left for a thousand generations. That's why we came. We didn't come just to sing normal songs and feel Christian. We are a people that will fulfill so many words that were prophesied. Peter said, the prophets who prophesied were not ministering these things to themselves. They actually ministered it unto us. Whom the end of the age has come. So there are so many things hanging that was spoken 3,000 years ago that was not about that time. And that's why the prophets looked mad when they were prophesying. Like the one that said, therefore a virgin shall conceive. They must have set up a council for him. I said, you know what? This is Isaiah. Something is wrong with his perception. But do you know what was a mystery to that generation? Is what we live in now as what has been fulfilled. So prophecy has two language. In the former times it will be said, and it shall come to pass. But after Jesus, it became, and it came to pass. Are you following me? Are you following me? So the Bible said, after he resurrected, then they understood. It was, you understand? So prophecy said in Isaiah 53, by his tribe, we are healed. When Peter was re referring to it in the New Testament, he said, for by his stripes, we were healed. We were healed. 
You don't get it. Because one people, some people stood before it, some other people are standing after it, and they are looking at, okay, it has come to pass, and it's orchestrating their journey. Are, are you following me? He returned to Nazareth, and according to his custom in Luke chapter 4, verse 9 to 13, he went to the Sabbath and stood up. Look, I mean, in Luke chapter 4, verse 16, I'm and stood up to read according to his custom, as his custom was. My problem with you is that many times all you do just end as a custom. In fact, some of us, our money devotions are just customary. We never see them as platforms of encounter. You don't know that many a time what you read as scripture what this were just conversations between God and some of his people that were his friends, such like you have. But they took it that serious. It was that real to them. But you, after you leave that money devotion, before you get to the door, you have even forgotten. Because you will do it again tomorrow morning. It's a custom. We are gathering together unto thee. We are gathering together. And that was the song I used to hear in my Sunday school. Everybody money devotion. Unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be. When that Lord whom you seek appear, will you like it? So he got there, he said, and he took the book, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Then he looked at them. Today is not reading day. Today is fulfillment day. Ah, yeah, but the how. I said, today is not. Reading. Some of you think today is preaching day. We have left the days of preaching. We have come to the days of fulfillment. Yeah. You are not here to just be writing something in the book. Yeah. I just learned something new today. Ah. I said, to be daddy. We are past that face. Yeah. I said, we are past that face. Yeah. We, are not, we now have an expanded reference for what we are doing. Yeah. We are not just gathering notes. Yeah. Are you following me? We are passing mantles. Yeah. Are you following me? We are locating purpose. Yeah. We are locating something to live for. Yeah. Are you following me? Yeah. That's why we are here. So Jesus said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hand. People say, we are not ready for fulfillment. We are only thinking of next Sabbath now. And some of us are saying, yeah, you are, see, 2022 must come. To do what? So you go through this cycle again. Then when I say, there is no pure language, they say, Pastor, it has a program. Pastor, it has a program. Let's do something. Let's do something. How many programs do we do without really having any expectation for anything to happen? No expectation for any for any forward movement, any radical change to happen. That is not the that's not the way Jesus comes to Jerusalem. Every time Jesus comes to Jerusalem, he doesn't come to just play custom. Hallelujah. In Luke 19, verse 28 to 48, he began to desire to come to Jerusalem again. When he had said this, he went up ahead, going to Jerusalem. Now, he was fully grown. If at age 12, he was already perceiving the prophetic meaning of going to Jerusalem. You know, at this time, he's not paying a visit. I say he's not paying a visit. I, just, I hope some of you are not just here to pay a visit. Um, if, in fact, by the time it was through with this discussion, it looked at his disciples and said, A prophet cannot perish except in Jerusalem. Which means, I know where I'm going. I, there is no other place I can be crucified and it will be accurate in the agenda of God except that place. So when he was going, other people were just going to Jerusalem. They wanted to go and see the minarets and the and the temple. Just was not going for sightseeing. May you be delivered from sightseeing gospel. It's how so you know tonight is experience. Oh, is great. The journey has passed that one. The journey has passed. Who is the new man of God in town? Since you've been learning about the new man of God in town, what has been new about you? 
every time the, the new sensation that boy look good why that guy is, is the one happening everybody's talking about it How, i have about 300 of these messages i'm not interested because you are just going there to purify your outward flesh he began to go to jerusalem look at matthew 23 from verse 37 to 39 let's begin to show you the things that jesus coming to jerusalem means to him i said jesus and his house how many of you are still following this story matthew 23 27 sorry 37 matthew 23 37 to 39 Oh Jerusalem, oh Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophet and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as egg gathers her chicks under her wing, but you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. Verse 39. For I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Then in verse chapter 24, verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And the disciples came to him and showed him the beauties of the temple. And what did he say to them? Do you see all these things? You didn't see that I just left it. When I left it, it stopped being what it used to be. Did you see these stones? Not one stone shall be left. So when he left, he was not just walking out of a building. He was actually signifying the departure of God's emphasis on that house. For another emphasis of God in the spirit. Are you following me? So when they began to show him the temple, he said, you see, everything there now is just rubbish. He had gone out of it. Because it doesn't play religion when you I hope you know when you hear sermons, God is not tingling your flesh. Some sermons are significant pillars in your journey. When they land, there are references that God will build on for another 15 years. You know, but when we come, what do we do? We just hear. Ski Pastor to be another guest minister, right? At for a new fee, a new fee. I deliver you from that type of running around and wasting your time. You are not here for a new fee. Some of us are here for something that should enter somewhere into our spirit and stay there and wait there until the moment of his fulfillment comes. Are you following me? Let me run you through quickly from the book of Mark. Uh, I will run from Mark chapter 11 to chapter 13. I will just give you a, a few. In Mark chapter 11, Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. And the first thing that happened there was what we call the triumphant entry. And people said, Shut down your disciples, you are shouting. He said, And those who went before him and those who followed him cried, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He said, That's the only cry they must cry so that their house will not be desolate. They will begin to. That was why when he was coming to Jerusalem that day, to some people, he was just coming, but they forgot that it was a fulfillment of Zechariah. Behold, your king is coming. Riding upon the coat. Even what he rode on was significant. How dare you come to a Christian meeting without significance? You think God is a joker? He picks your pastors deliberately. If you are very sensitive, he even determines who speaks in a meeting deliberately. Five prophets can sit down to a place in a place, and he, all of them can be his mouthpiece, but he will put his hand on one. And many a times have you discovered we use the one you don't like? Because many a times you like people more than the word. Say, so can the can the pastor move to prophesy a word in the Bible? 
So God said, okay, T baby, you are the one I want to use. They don't like you. So in their spirit, they will know you are saying the truth, but they don't like your face. And God is asking them, what's your greatest problem? There are some of you that are still waiting for the day past that when he comes to this house to have your miracle. You are wasting your time. Your miracle started last night. Yeah. Amen. Between cherry picking. God knows that the reason why he sends certain people to me is because he wants to break certain attitudes. He introduces certain people deliberately. This is my son. Hear him. Hear him. Yeah. The people you must hear, they will choose you. Yeah, I know you don't. You, I know you don't like long salmon. I know you. I know you. I know, I know that what you like is three points and power. Then God will say, "This is move." Why can I go? Yeah, because the way you are going, you are a disaster going to happen. You are so fired up in prayer, you know nothing. Yeah, yeah. When you first start hearing him, you won't like it. But after some time, you get hooked up. It was God's plan. It was God's plan. I said it's God's plan. So he came to Jerusalem. And the next thing he did was in verse 15, he began to cleanse the temple. He drove out those who sold and said, Is this written? My house. In Luke chapter 2, he said, My father's house. By this time, he had even gone further. My house. Do you know why? Because the father is in me. My house shall become. When the temple become your house, you were brought there to be dedicated. He said, when I was a child and I have not gained understanding. When I became a man, I stopped calling it temple. Do you know what I call it? My house. Some of you, when you are so young, you treat church, church is Pastor Moves Church. That is the path, platform for lack of commitment. Pastor Moves Church. Like case priest, you should call it. So you tell yourself, even if I'm not, if I don't stress myself, it's no problem. But as you begin to gain understanding, you will discover that when they give you an assignment in church, it's not a man talking to you. You don't get it. I know you didn't see an angel, but suddenly, you don't know you. That's a sign of purpose. And you will hone it. Because you are gaining understanding. Then there's an expanded view of what is happening. Ah, are you following? My house shall be called the house of prayer for all nations when you get to verse 27 when they came again to jerusalem as he was walking in the temple the chief priest and the scribe and the elders came to him and said by what authority do you do this he had cleansed the temple physically but he's not cleaning the temple Structurally, he was not dealing with people who are selling dogs anymore. He was not dealing with people who claim to be teachers in it. For the Lord whom you seek, do you know that the Pharisees, their permanent address was temple. They are dis- their description. They are people that seem to love him. Is appearing, but when the one whom they seek appeared. One day he looked at them and he said, by whose authority do you do this? He said, I need to ask a question for you. John the Baptist is authority from God or from men. He showed them that you people are not necessarily committed to scripture. You are committed to what is safe. So they went back to their safety mode. What is their safety mode? If we say it's from God, if we say why didn't you believe it? If we say it's from men, the people will stone us because they believe it's from God. They said, We don't know. He said, Me too, I'm not there. I have just come to show you that you carry a religious program, but you don't know. And 
one of the things God does to cleanse his temple is to bring you to a place where you, it, will deny, it, will de- it will unravel it to you that you might have a name bigger than who you are. That you might be called a scribe and you don't know. That's what he told Nicodemus. Are you a teacher in Israel and you don't there are too many people who have been in church for too many times mentioning the name Jesus and they don't know. They are not on the same page with God. And the Lord won't be. So when they say Jesus, Jesus, I say, okay, I have a question for you. Who is Jesus? How many of you know that question moments are tense moments? It's very easy to say, I love, I love the man of Galilee. For he has done so very much for me. Do you know who Galilee is? Galilee was a community of nations. It was the place of the depressed and the de- deserted of Israel. You can't love the man of Galilee and you cannot associate with people who are the downtrodden of the earth. Do you really love the man of Galilee? Mm. You love the man of Galilee, but every day of your life you are looking to slowly dine with kings. How many of you love the man of Galilee? But if I don't bring you that question moment, if I just give you a song, you are happy. You know what the song of it. Do you know there is another fellowship? Sing now. Where is the keyboard? Point to your neighbor. Do you know there you are not what is it? Get the key. Do you know? There is another fellowship in There are so many people you don't love that you are going to live with eternally. So start loving them now. Can you say, yeah, I don't like that brother. That you will be saying to Jesus forever and ever. When the soul will not set. <laughs> And you say you know there's another fellowship in there. <laughs> so I looked at the, the, the people that I was authority. Because I'm doing another type of cleansing now. I've moved from the physical cleansing of the church, of the temple, because it's my house. Then when you when you go further in that mark, I'm I'm just rushing a whole sum. That should take many hours. Many hours of opening Bible. But I know you are bored. You don't like opening Bible anymore. Everything is now screen. And even the screen gone. Some of you say you're retaining left. You know, I was talking to one man of God. The man of God that came here yesterday. We were talking in the hotel this morning. And he was speaking. He said something that struck me. He said the senior pastor said he's still very astonished about Paul's apostolic pattern. How Paul will go to a city and dwell there for six months and he will know that he has accomplished what he needs to do. And he will raise elders and commit the church to them. Because some of us, after doing this for 15 years, we are still not sure if we leave and put some people here that will not become business enemy. We are not sure. I'm not sure Yinka will not be selling cars on the other if I put him here. It, it, it said that thing and it struck me. How can a man just minister to in a place for six months and he's sure? But I, I answered him and I said, but you know his meetings are not your type of meeting. When Paul is somewhere for six months, even the people that are his disciples will know. It's not, let's come on Wednesday, Friday. They break bread daily. Without knowing when the meeting will end, it will teach leadership, it will teach discipleship, it will teach prayer for six months. But today, if I just declare tomorrow, next week, we have this plan language not ending, we are having seven days in the pastor, pastor. We have many things to do. That's why after 15 years, we can't commit it to you. Because you can't be moved by the spirit. You have already patterned God, and God must only happen once in four months. That's why our fathers have labored for 40 years and they are still afraid to die. 
Some of you now, you are only copying the devils inside of you. In my Ara show. As every December, we will be doing Asha and Bill. All this is what Pastor is doing. I don't understand. It is you, but I'm here. And that's why I won't go. Because I know you are not Corinth or Thessalonia. <laughs> we can't stay here for three months and say we are done. We are done. But we will not be tired. He has encouraged us in the scripture. He said, You see, your time is perilous time. He told us. He said, So this is what you will do. Preach the word. In season. And out of season. Uh-huh. When you are through with your language, when they come on Sunday, preach again. Carol service. Preach again. Say, say, are you hearing me? Appreciation service. Preach again. Because that's how we can save some. Because it's perilous time. I'm telling you. It's your dance drama. I can't help you. I didn't see anything. Let me go back to my sermon. Are we still here? Nika, are you here? Because the way you are looking at me, say, I'll preach again. Whether you go to food school for money today, when you come back, I'll preach. I'll clear the choir to get your exile of 15 minutes, pray to God and pray and I'll preach again. Because our gathering is significant in the spirit. And we need to begin to put that value on it. The reason why we don't get his best is because we don't have that type of vision for it. So after 20 years of being church, they are still asking, who is Shedda Mesha and Abel, you are doing like this? Because you have never attended an apostolic meeting where somebody taught for five hours. It has, it, you say, give me a hour. I would have slept 15 times. We know you. We know because we, are, we express it. <laughs> I won't mention your name. I love you so much. I know some of you, yeah, if I'm going too much, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and when somebody comes and says, I was praying the Spirit. <laughs> I, I was just, you know, I was in the Spirit. Glory to God. It, by the time you get to Mark chapter 12, he began to give them a parable. And what was the parable? It was a parable of wicked, of, of of, of, of wicked vine dressers. A man that left his vineyard with people. And when he was coming back to take it, they started killing his servant and killing his son. And he told them in verse 9, Therefore what will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the vine dressers and give the vineyard to others. Have you not even read this in the scripture? The stone with the builders has rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, is marvelous in our eyes. And they sought to lay hands on him and fear the multitude. For they knew he had spoken the parable against them. So they went away. Who are the people that sought to lay hands on him? This Pharisee suddenly, this guy is talking to us. He said, even that parable, I'm talking to you people because I will cleanse this house. I know you are the people that everybody thinks you are the most desirous for the house. But I know that the house is out of order physically, is out of order structurally, is out of order spiritually. And when the Lord shall come, it will come like a refiner's fire and like a full of soap. And it will purge us. Are we together? So that the offering of his people will be accepted. Why we come here is to bring something that can make meaning in heaven. Our offerings, our songs must create movement in the spirit. When we join ourselves and agree and touch a team, heaven must move. That's why we are here. Am I making sense? Then when you get to verse 13, they sent to him some of the Pharisees and the Herodians. They said, teacher, we know you teach from God. These ones, the Herodians, they are concerned about civil authority and, and order. So they came to him. They have only one problem. Caesar, should we pay him? Jesus said, these are the things troubling this house. He thought I was only, he thought when Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, he was coming to attack people who are selling doves. That was a type of the disorder. Then he looked at the other day and said, let me tell you your own problem. Bring a coin. Whose, go, whose image is this? He says, I give to Sarah what is Sarah. But give to God what is God. 
The Bible says, and they marveled at him. I'm showing you how many voices he silenced. He silenced the, the, the sellers. He silenced the Pharisees. He silenced the Herodians. And the next people that came to him in verse 18 were the Sadducees. All this happened at his journey to the temple. Jesus does not come to the temple to play. Ah, are you following me? Every structure that has been having control there and debates there, but that are not bringing people to God, he found a way of addressing them. Who are the Sadducees? The Sadducees are the people that believe there is no angel and there is no resurrection. And they came with something very pregnant. They said, Jesus, we know that you are saying there is angel. But this is the problem. There is a man that had the wife. And the man died. And he has seven brothers. And you know, the brothers married the wife. According to the law, you know. And all of them died. So who is going to be the husband of the woman in heaven? Jesus said, you people don't know scripture. You think, I, you think this is religion? You are talking to the other. He said, he is not the God of the dead. He said, how can God be telling you I am the God of Abraham if Abraham is dead? God, how can God be the God of something that does not exist? <laughs> he said, but what you don't even know is that they don't even marry in heaven. Wow. Ah, people said, the Pharisees were happy. Yes! He has given the Pharisees answer. Then he looked at the Pharisees, your own truth come. Glory to God. Amen. Then in verse 28, one of the scribes, he has attended to Pharisees, Sadducees, Herodians, those sellers, scribes. Scribes are just, they don't know, they are just knowledge. About knowledge. One of them came to him and said, what's the first commandment? What's the greatest commandment? And he told them, you shall love the Lord your God. And in verse 32, the scribe said to him, well said, teacher, you have spoken the truth, for there is one God, and there is no other one but he. And to love him with all the heart, and with all understanding, with all the soul, and with all strength, and to love one's neighbor as one's self, is more than all the whole bond of life. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom. But after that, no one dared to ask him questions. He has silenced Pharisee, silenced Herodians, silenced Sadducee, silenced Scribe, silenced Dove Sellers. He has become the Lord of the house. Truly, it is his house. What did he just come to do? Every impostor has been silenced and chased out. May God come back to the center of your worship. <laughs> Because there are so many other voices that have taken authority in the midst of our worship and they are making us far from, at, from, at, from attaining what God has called us to be. They are shrinking the reference of our worship into their debates and their views. After they've asked him more questions, then he now, it was his own turn to ask questions. He said, is David, is, is the Messiah the son of David? They said, yes. How can David be calling him Lord when he's his son? He said, we don't know. We need, may God come to his house so that the things we think is knowledge, it will make them bear that there are no knowledge. Because most of us have gone from place to place celebrating nothing. I said, ah, you, you know how many meetings you have gone to? You felt you were so loaded. Then you discover you are so empty. Do you know why? You just went to waste time. People wowed you. Jesus didn't come to wow you here. Jesus came to change. And it must happen. I, I said Jesus came to what? To change you. When he was true with that question, in verse 38, now said, beware of the Pharisees, of the scribes. They desire to go around the long rope. You see, this is their own problem. All the things they are doing is just to have a position. How dare you reduce the pursuit of God to position? This is not the fast I have chosen. This is not the reason I have set up this house. 
are you with me, church? This is not the purpose I have set up this house. They desire to go around long road. They love greeting marketplaces. Baba. Hmm. All of you that will be doing your own. Beware of death. They devour with those houses and for pretense they make long prayers. They will see greater damnation. Do you know the next thing he did in the temple? In verse 41, he sat down and watched how people brought their treasures. He is truly the Lord of his house. Is that down there? People are bringing as they were bringing. Then suddenly they commented. See that woman that brought two months. She has brought greater than all these people. She suddenly, brought, suddenly made us to know that money is not about the weight. It's about the heart. Until the Lord of the temple came, the people who have been there have been weighing money by the quantity. So when they see the rich man, the Pharisees say, uh, how many of you attended those type of churches? Because those are the people that will bring something. You know why all of you laughed? Because this culture did not disappear. This is a culture that made certain churches to a day a man that have 15 wives. Alagba. She passed to Alagba. Hey, the crew no joy you. Until the Lord of the temple came and said, You know what? A widow's might is heavier. And sometimes he needs to sit close with you to reorientate you because you have picked orientations that are wrong too. And sometimes you have thought that. So until he started talking, even the eyes of the disciples were on the big men. May he sit with you so that he will change your perspective to life. Because that's the Lord of the temple. And in chapter 13, after he has done that, then he stepped out of the temple. And he stepped out of the temple, disciples, and I said, Okay, Lord, see the stone of this temple. Ah, the, the architect of these houses. And he said, Everything I wanted to use the temple to do is done. This is the problem. When the glory came into the Old people could not enter. When the glory came into the New Testament, it challenged our flesh so much that we didn't want it to. Even the, by the time we were through with the disciples, the disciples now sat down. Oh Lord, okay. Show us the sign of your coming. Because since we came, you have dealt with Pharisees, dealt with Sadducees, dealt with everybody, dealt with strife. We, God, that we are trying to encourage you. This temple, see the temple now. You came to us and told us nothing. You just, every, you provide everything. Now that, don't be deceived. Do not be deceived. He just sat. By the time Jesus was through with his disciples, in John chapter 14, he, was, he started introducing, he said, when I'm talking about temple, I'm talking about something different. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. They say, Ah, show us the father. Philip, have you been with me? Don't you know the father is in me? The father's house is me. Because the temple is no physical building anymore. The temple is the temple of his body. You have a house in that body. That's why you are in the body of Christ. Then he said, I go make place for you. Some of us are still looking for block and cement in heaven. Even if you become an eternal regenerated incorruptible spirit, can one contain you? How can that be your house? I'm having a window here. I'm having blood. Many at times we are not on the same page with him. I said, when you delight in me to I am my father, we come and make our abode in you. Because I will not only be the 
temple, you too will become the temple of the Holy Spirit. When God begins to expand your understanding of who his house is, what is house, whatever we do changes meaning. I told us yesterday that when a child begins to grow, I said, I am the son of my father. They'll say, David, the son of Jason, the son of Boaz, the son of uh, Obed, the son of Boaz. David did not meet Boaz. But he had gone in understanding enough to connect himself to things that he never lived to see. That never, do you get what I'm saying? When you begin to grow in understanding and you are not a babe, you will connect yourself to the farthest reference of God's purpose. Paul, right, writing about it in this way, said, Don't you know your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Suddenly, it was your body. But when you began to take thoughts about what it is, it stopped being your body. It became temple. And he said, he said And you were bought with a price. Suddenly, the right to self desire was taken. Are you following me? So he said, At times you live not for yourself anymore. When they tell you, when we were young, when the world was the world, the easiest way to set you into factory set when you are going from home is remember whose son you are. I built my name. Don't go spoil it. And you have all the delinquencies of a teenager, except for that word. Suddenly you discover, and that is not your name. It's another person's name, but it is now your name. But because you are beginning to gain understanding and wisdom, you treasure something that does not seem to have a direct reference to you, but has an implication on you. Whose temple you are, because the Holy Ghost dwells in you. Therefore, you can't take your member and make them members of an harlot. Because they are members of Christ. Christ. They said to you, your highs is not your highs anymore. And may we recover those consecrations. So when your highs begin to see what you should not see, say, I'm, already, I'm misusing a member of Christ. The way Jesus used eyes in, in his time is to see sick people. Me, how am I using? I should never use your own eyes. How did he use his hand? Didn't I sit around the green bottle holding it with firmness? That's a member of Christ. He said, No, Pastor, why are you putting me in bondage? It's my hand, it's not yours. the reference so that you discover that's where you will carry your body as a vessel in sanctification you you just get conscious that it is a something is inside of it that is not you we have this treasure in a vessel so this is just a container for something that is not even us don't you know what is inside of you? Is the Holy Spirit of God. This body is just a container for God to find expression on heart. It must begin to make sense at that level. Ah, uh, you're not getting this. Expand. Keep the covenant of your marriage. It's not just, it's my choice. It's not my choice anymore. That's why the world walks in and walks out. Do you know why? They live for themselves. All of us know what we can do, but we don't belong to ourselves. 
we have traced the seed whose son is the son of some of you when you want to do your son of move that was not enough to hold you back son of Ayodede meeting you son of Idaoza you carry something that have lasted many generations it can wake you up from liturgy you are not of your own we are all invested in you go invest in others we are made what we are today by the impartation of the gifts of so many people who are you giving your time to you are here today because some people gave their time and in fact much more than their time they gave their life now you are holding your own check your lineage check how your father has lived you will know you are not living accurately and when you can trace it is because you are gaining understanding if you are not gaining understanding you think like a child are you are you following me your reference is literally your reference is self hebrews 3 verse 1 to 6 i'll show you about four customs of jesus and we pray hebrews 3 verse 1 to 6 therefore holy brethren partakers of the heavenly calling consider the apostle and the high priest of our confession jesus christ who was faithful to him who appointed him as moses was faithful in all his house for this one had been more counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who built the house has more honor than the house. You don't congratulate the house, you congratulate the builder. For every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is God. Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of the things which will be spoken afterward verse 6 but christ has a son over his own house whose house we are suddenly just made us to know the house i have been talking about is not that temple whose house we are if we hold if you don't journey you won't know that's why after he had done all those things in the temple he was showing them the jealousy of god for their life and what god wants them to be he stepped out of the house and told them this thing will be a rubble because whose house you are if you hold the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end the finest expression of the house is you every journey took them through was to show them the, the insistence of God about this house and pattern tonight I pray that everything we do will jump from the realm of custom and practices and they will begin to carry spiritual significance they will not just be physical out it will journey to what God wants it to be. Whose house you are. Luke one night told us Zechariah offered incense according to the custom of priesthood. Luke two twenty seven told us Mary came to the to the temple when they brought the the, the child to do to him according to the custom of the law. Luke 2 42 Luke 2 42 when he was 12 years he went up to Jerusalem according to custom of the feast. Custom of priest. Custom of the law. Custom of the feast. Luke 4 16 he came to Nazareth, and when he had brought, when he had we had been brought up, and as his custom was, what was his custom? The custom of going to Sabbath. You don't find him sitting at home, but it's not just so that they can say, "This is my church." The more he was doing those things, are you following me? The 
most spiritual essence of those actions was settling in. I have a problem with people who attend church, and the more they attend church, the, the more the essence of this gathering diminishes to us. You don't. So we start with the expectation, then we end with familiarity. No. There will be patterns and custom, but they are all leading us to the fullness, which is essence. Are you following? Just add customs. What are your customs? One of our customs is to sit around the world, but it's not an end in itself. Are you following? Mark chapter 1, verse 35 to 39. Before day, Jesus was already praying. It was his custom. What I'm trying to tell you is that may you develop certain things consistent in your life that can become a platform that God can rest on. I am trying to tell you since yesterday that your morning devotion can be the hope of a nation. I know you just do it. You think it is custom. But that might be the place where God will come and meet you and say, I am about to do something. Because most of you think most encounters are so dramatic in the company of people. I was in a hotel room with somebody who said, and we were talking, and as we were talking, we were talking, and I just broke into a vision. Then he looked at me, he knew I was not there anymore because I was not there. Then he pointed to me, he said, Man of God, say what? Then I tried, I said, This is what I saw, this is what I saw. And he started laughing. He said, you can't understand. You are the fourth man giving me the word, word for word. It looked like a flash. He said, you, are, you described my journey in ministry till this moment. He said, okay. I thought I was just... He now said, I know I didn't come to play. It was God that said I should come and see gatherings are potent. When we say it is well, we are not just wishing you, we are prophesying to you. We are telling you what will happen. Are you following me? Glory to God. chapter 22 verse 39 coming out he went to the mount of olives as he was accustomed holy and the place of prayer and retreat was a normal custom of Jesus John chapter 18 verse 1 and 2 told us Judas knew the place do you know why Judas knew the place that was not the first time Jesus was visiting the place when Jesus had spoken this word, he went out to disciples over the brook Kidron. And when where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered, verse 2, Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place. For Jesus often met there with his disciples. And there were days he went there and he looked that they were just playing. But this particular night, in the days of his flesh, he cried with groanings. In so much that it was like he was sweating blood and God had him. It was something that he was doing awful, but one day the meaning of that place showed up. It was a place they've always been visiting, but that place was called Getsiman. Getsiman is oil press. There were days they went there and they didn't feel no press. But God said, it's significant. But one day, the significance of all the gatherings began to happen. Everybody felt the pressure. Jesus went through the pressure. The disciples went through the pressure. They couldn't even stand for one hour. They were praying and they were sorrowful. The entire pressure was on them. And suddenly they said, where are we? Get Simon. Don't mind the pressure. Look at the hole flowing out of it. Out of the ashes of my dying today, I see the breaking of a new day. In with the name of the Lord. Suddenly, God, the Jordan is God. God didn't choose Gethsemane because of the topography. 
Why are you in the bottom? I just like the atmosphere. That's not why God brought you. Why are you fair treasure? Even though occasionally you can hear me, but man share. Because it's deliberate. My prayer for you is that the meaning of things that are almost becoming custom and custom and eh? thank you, thank you, that's the word tradition, we come back to us gatherings have meanings in the spirit that's why you can't forsake it there are certain things in God's agenda you can never encounter alone Pentecost did not come to anybody alone did you notice and that day they were in one accord in one place why because it's not just an empowerment of a people it's actually the part of the body for you are all baptized into one body by one spirit so as much every time you are thinking Pentecost think about the empowerment of the spirit in people's life but you have not expanded the reference of Pentecost until you think about the bonding of the body May God not anoint you to disconnect from the body. Because that's not Pentecost. Pentecost is not just one. It's one fire that divided on each one. Which means it's one fire. Which means everything you are operating in is just an expression of one fire. It's not another fire. May you not have another fire. Any other fire is a strange fire. There is one fire. There is one law. There's one baptism. There's one spirit. Are you following me? There can be diversities of it, differences of administration, but there is one Lord. May you not have another Lord. Uh, are you following me? Anything you do that cannot bring you back into the body has led you to, has led you astray. It's not God anymore. It makes you so unique, but it does not make you independent. Am I making sense? It makes you so unique in your own dimension, but it doesn't make you independent. It makes you dependent on the gift of other people. Hallelujah. So some of you were amazed when I told last night, I said, let that man of God start praying. You know, he said, Pastor Matthew, you know, not need faith. Having gifts different. When I entered my own slot, he would sit down. He came out the way from Abdiya to hear me talk. That's my gift. That's his gift. By the same spirit. How many of you gain what I the understanding of what I said to you? The first time he came to the temple was a baby. He didn't even know what they were doing. That's how you started too. Every time you first came, you was just we are going to church. The next time he came, he was 12. At that time, he was taking shape. It was not calling temple anymore. It was calling it my father's house. At some other time when he came, it was not calling my father's house. The day is coming when you begin to mature. You describe anything you are doing for your father, you are doing for yourself. It's my house. Don't you know this? My this house shall be called the house of prayer. That's a symbol of growth. So that disconnection will be. Deep from that disconnection when you begin to grow because you will discover that you are members of one another you are not forcing yourself on anybody it is just what God has designed lift your hands everybody tonight say father expand my understanding the things I do daily that I don't know why I'm doing them the things I say daily some of us pray in the spirit, but it does not make any meaning to us anymore. Don't you know that if a man speaks in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries unto God. He's not speaking jargons. Speaking mysteries. Expand my understanding tonight. Expand my understanding tonight. Lift your head and ask for it. I have been a child when I didn't understand, when I didn't put honor and I didn't put value on it. But now I'm a, I'm a man. I'm a man. 
I'm coming to a point where I know these things have their purposes. They have their reasons. They have their reasons. Don't let me trivialize what is important to you. Let me know the fast that you have chosen. Let me know the things you have honored. That's a serious prayer to pray. That's what is called the expanded reference of faith. God told Israel, is this the fast I have chosen? Is this the fast? May you not stand at miss. May you not labor at miss. Stand to your feet, everybody, and begin to intercede and just pray. 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 Mary came to the temple for her purification. She didn't know she came to present the consolation of Israel. I've not seen as much as I ought to see. I've not known more as much as I ought to know. Until I know you as I am known. Until I know you as I'm known. Until I capture that which is in the heart of the Father. Until I'm delivered from just customs of men to the essence of the Spirit. Until when I pray in the Spirit, I know I'm not just playing games. I am actually speaking mysteries to God. Until it comes to me like that. When I touch and agree with my brother, I'm not only just a hand, I'm crossing brothers in the spirit. Until I begin to see it like that. Until when I begin to see relationships as covenants. Where God is a party. Until when I begin to see my treasures, not just in their size, but in the willingness of heart. Until when I know that the house of God is the house of prayer for all nations. Expand my view. Expand my view. I surrender, I surrender, I want to know you more. Jesus came, he drove men out that were selling, pushed the Pharisees from the from the seat of knowledge and placed them to you do not know. Let God push out every human idea out of us tonight. Let the glory of God you not know, take all over whatsoever we have accommodated, but that we that is not allowing us to have the full 
understanding of what we do, let them be pushed out under the weight of God's glory. Raise that voice and pray. Lord, as I see your glory, let the power of the flesh drop. Let it drop. Ministry is not just a place to have a name. Push it out. Push it out of the door. Push those things out of the door. Push them out of the door. Push them out. Push them out. Push them out. Push them out. No flesh can glory in his presence. No flesh will glory in his presence. No flesh will glory in his presence. Push it out. Push it out. Lord, from my life, expand my view of your kingdom. Let me see your kingdom for what it is. Seeing life from your own perspective is too small. Let me see your kingdom. Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. Why did we get born again? Is to see. We must see the kingdom. Pray. That the Lord will expand your view of what the kingdom. The kingdom happens around you every day. The kingdom is at work. But the reason why you don't see it is because your view is limited. The kingdom is in relationships that you have. The kingdom is in friendships. It's the kingdom. Yes, that's the kingdom. The kingdom is in, the, is in your actions and reactions. The kingdom is in your testimony. But I don't know whether you see it. Thank you, Lord, tonight. For the customs you have planted in our life, the custom of hearing your word, listening to your word, teaching your word, the custom of fellowship, the custom of coming to your house. We thank you for them. We receive them with thanksgiving. But much more, we thank you because they have meaning. We thank you because they have an expanded reference in the spirit. We thank you because they have greater purpose than we can imagine. And we thank you because we are gaining that understanding. When they were walking around Jericho for six days, it was perceived as a walk around. It was not a walk around. It was a pulling down. It was a pulling down. When you came here tonight, you didn't come to walk around certain situations. You came to pull them down. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty true God to pull down struggle. Are you hearing me? We are not training you here to manage certain situations. Yeah. We are giving you power to pull down certain situations. Yeah. Uh, so for six days, people say, they are just walking around looking for an opening, looking for an opening. We are not looking for an opening. Every place is going to be an opening. Every wall is going to fall. Every space is going to open. We are not looking for weakness. When you are going around the world, they think you are looking for a crack. So they say, they are looking for those people that don't have job. Oh, 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 what God is doing, the mighty will bow before it. All kings will come and bow. The most stout and the most proud, they will shake at the presence of the most high God. We are not looking for weakness. We are looking for victory. This work is not a work of passing time. This is a significance of victory. So tonight, you are living here with power that pull down strongholds. Things you have worked with for six years, and you have walked around in circles, you will not just walk around in circles, you will pull them down by the weapons of your warfare. 
I said you will pull them down. When Jesus came to the temple, he came not as a visitor of the temple, but as the Lord. And the Lord, whom you see, shall suddenly appear in his temple. May the Lord appear in your journey as Lord. May he speak with authority in all your considerations. May he shut the voices of every condemnation. May he shut the voices of every confusion. May he shut the voices of every impostor. May the Lord alone be exalted and praised. May the Lord alone be exalted and praised. May the Lord alone be exalted and praised. In the name of Jesus Christ. So this your walk is not a walk of play. It's a walk of victory. This your shout is not a shout of frustration. It's a shout of victory. That's your next shout. Your next shout is a shout of victory. Your next shout is a shout of victory. Command the victory to happen here now in Jesus' name. Can be by your He said to the priest, In this way you will bless the children of Israel. And when you bless them, you will put my name on them. It's not a wish, it's a command. It's not a wish, it's a command. So the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord give you peace. The Lord give you peace. Ah, wherever you have been troubled, the Lord give you peace. This is a house of peace. God is not the author of confusion. Is the author of peace in all these churches. If you came to this church tonight with trouble, you are leaving this house with peace. You have come to meet the Lord of peace, the Prince of peace. I see peace in your journey. You get your word, I see peace in your journey. I see peace in your journey. I command that agitation to disappear. I command that agitation to disappear in the name of Jesus Christ. Makarosaha, Mambro Kelusaba. Every time Jesus came into the temple, he had a better view of what it means. So from tonight, as you go, you disappear from being childish. In understanding, you become men. You can see the finger of God in your ears. You can see that your ears are pregnant with purpose. Your eyes of understanding are open. 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 In the name of Jesus. Tonight is the night of the book of remembrance of somebody. Seven years ago, the war is coming now. The word of something of seven years ago is returning to somebody tonight. You thought it's forgotten. But the Lord is not a man that he should lie, or the Son of Man that he should repent. Ayata Naya, Kati Tabuda Haye, Brandi Talako Bali Setana, Brande, Ida Kota Libarada. I see remembrance. Mrs. Fatoba, I see a remembrance. I see a remembrance of some things of many years ago. And the Lord said that she said to you, the remembrance is bringing a deliverance. You, the enemy will not afflict you. The son of wickedness will not lay on you. I have shielded you. 
because I have remembered, I see harvest. I think I see an harvest. I am Katane, it does mature. It does mature, said the Lord. I see an harvest. Tonight, and it's your portion. It's your portion. It's your portion. You will write in what you think you do not desire. It will put you there. Joseph wrote in the chariot of Pharaoh, what was given for kings shall be given to you. What was given for people that you think you cannot even run with shall be given to you. It shall be given to you. It's a night of remembrance. Naked there is a remembrance. For tears and for heartbreaks, there is a remembrance. I am a buyer. In six months, there is a settlement coming in your journey. A settlement is coming in your journey. Man, the sun, the higher caliber. Everybody lift your hands and give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this rain. Thank you for this rain. Thank you for the growth of understanding. children, we are going. Lift your hands and give God praise tonight. Oh, celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Hallelujah. Glory. Whatsoever must come to an end as it departed from the temple, the essence of that temple came to an end. Whatsoever must come to an end for a new beginning to happen. By the time you step out of this meeting, it hurts. Cycle of disappointment, it hurts. By the word of the Lord, it hurts. In the name of Jesus Christ. The breaking of day tomorrow is a new day. Not just physically, but even spiritually. It's a new day. It's a new day. Out of the ashes of my dying today, I see the breaking of a brand new day. He which the day of the Lord has made me proud. I see the breaking of a brand new day. Out of the ashes. 